between the flow rate okay, and the pressure rise that the pump can create. So once you've got the pump characteristic, we can then try and match up what the pipe is doing so we can determine the operating point. Okay? So if we take a, uh, um, a pipe system, okay, we can analyse it, determine what the pump is, you know, where, which pump is operating and where it's operating. Okay? Um, and we've got an example down here. Okay, this is on page 34 of your notes. Essentially, we've got two reservoirs. Okay? We've got PA and PB, which are pressurised. These are closed reservoirs, notice. Okay? These are, this is the static pressure and the static pressure on top of A and B, respectively. Okay? We know we've got a pipeline of length L. In that pipeline is the pump, and the diameter is distance D, and the, dis the height difference between A and B is distance H. Okay? And so from that, we can determine Bernoulli's equation. Okay? The pump has to overcome... The hydrostatic pressure, okay, which is obviously the, related to the height, it's got to overcome the pressure difference, PA minus PB, and it also needs to overcome the losses due to the friction and the minor losses in the pipe. Okay? And so we use Bernoulli's equation. Well, here's Bernoulli's equation. Okay. You should all be familiar with that. Notice we've got the delta PP term in here, the pressure rise. Okay, so we've got PA and PB. Well, they're there. Okay. PA and PB, one half rho c squared, one half rho c squared, well that's the dynamic pressure in the pipeline, but because we're using reservoirs, this is one of the rules you can assume, because we've got reservoirs, we can assume that CA, which is the surface here, and CB, which is the surface here, have zero velocity, because the velocity of those reservoirs in that direction, in the, in the y direction, is negligible compared to the velocity of the flow in the pipe, so we can assume that they're zero, Okay, and then obviously ZA and ZB is going to be the difference in the height, so that relates to that H term. And we've got delta PP and then the losses, which, you, which is the minor losses and friction. And so we can do some uh, rearrangements. Okay, A and B are reservoirs, so CA and CB are zero. So we, those drop out, this, these two drop out, okay. So that we're on one side, we've got these A terms plus the pressure rise due to the pump. And here we've got the B terms due to the pressure loss, okay? And we've got the pressure rise of the pump, so putting this on this side, we've got PB minus PA. And putting ZA on this side, we've got rho G ZB minus ZA. And obviously we can replace that value with H, which is the height difference. And then we've got the losses on this side. And so just looking at the losses, we know that the losses, if we're excluding minor losses, which we're doing at the, at the moment, okay, Obviously, we've got the pressure loss is FL upon D times the dynamic pressure, which you all should be familiar with by now. And what I've done here is I've rearranged this term. Okay, I've replaced C. We know that V dot equals A times C, and so that's where all this stuff comes from. If I, uh, if I just do a, show you on the, um, on the visualizer how we get from there, there to there. I just need a plank piece of paper somewhere. Use my logbook. And so, we, if we say that uh, V dot, yeah, I will do. V dot equals A times C, okay, so we know that from that that C equals a, uh, V dot over A. And if we know that A is pi D squared upon 4, then we know that C equals 4 times V dot over pi D squared, okay. And so with our, that's relatively simple basic algebra, okay. I'll zoom out a bit so it's a bit sharper. Is that easier? Okay. And so with our FL upon D times by one half rho C squared, okay, well we know that C here, if I write C squared, that's going to be 16 V dot squared over pi squared D to the power of 4. So if, if I stick that in this equation, okay, we have FL upon D 
times by one half times by rho times by this lot, 16 v dot squared divided by pi squared d to the power of 4. Okay? Now 16 divided by 2, that's going to be 8. So that gets rid of those two. We've got fl times by rho. fl times by rho over, well, we've got d4 and d, d here, so that's d to the 5 pi squared. Okay? And then obviously that's multiplied by v dot squared. Okay, can you all see that? And so we've got FL upon D times one half rho C squared. We've replaced C squared with a value that's respective to V dot, okay, which is 16 V dot squared over pi, D, pi squared D to the 4. You stick that in for C squared into this bit of the equation, okay, and then rearranging, you get this simplified form 8 FL rho over D to the power of 5 pi squared times by v dot squared, okay? Have you all got that? So that's where this, this term comes from. So what we can do now is we can replace delta PL with this term here, okay? Notice we've got another quadratic in terms of v dot. So if I stick that into that equation, substituting that in, we have rho A minus rho B. Sorry, no, excuse me. We have PB minus PA, okay, so that's going to be the pressure, the static pressures of, in reservoirs A and B. Sometimes, if you're dealing with open reservoirs, those values are the same. So obviously that, that term there just drops to zero, okay? We have rho GH, which is due to the height difference. Okay, and then we have this term, okay, multiplied by a v dot squared. And so what we can do is we can say, let's assume that that we call the static lift, okay, it's independent of the flow rate, okay, so if there was no flow, you still need that pressure just to keep the reservoirs at the levels that they are, okay. So you need that pressure rise, and then that would create no flow, but you need that pressure to stop all the stuff in the reservoir flowing back to the first reservoir, okay. And then this is called the flow rate dependent term, okay, because that depends upon how much flow you've got. The higher the flow rate, the greater this term is going to be, or the greater this value is going to be. As flow rate goes up, this value completely will increase, okay. And so we can replace, this is a constant, okay, so we'll call that C1. And assuming your friction factor is constant, and this value is also constant, we call that C2. And so we can rearrange this equation, and we can just say that the pipe characteristic is the pressure rise due to the pump equals C1 plus C2 times V dot squared. So this is called the pipe characteristic, okay? We covered the pump characteristic. This is the pipe characteristic. And so the operating point, we've got two equations for delta PP, okay? The pressure rise due to the pump for the pump characteristic, we found out that that was this equation. For the pipe characteristic, we found out that it was this equation. Okay, And what we can do is we can match those two equations. These are both equal to delta PP, and that will give us the operating point. So we have an equation here. A1 minus A2 times V dot squared equals C1 plus C2 times V dot squared. Okay, And so generally with this equation, or th with this system, You'll be given this de these details. You'll be given the pump um, pump characteristic. You, so you'll know what A1 and A2 are. Okay? And you'll generally have to calculate what C1 and C2 are. Again, that's basic um, pipe dynamics of which you've done multiple examples of. Okay? And it's all about finding those values that we covered, which is what C1 and C2 are. And like I said, we'll go through an example but what does this mean? Well, essentially what we can do is we can plot, okay, the pump characteristic. You saw this curve before, okay? Remember, it was an upside-down parabola with A1 being the y-intercept, okay? And so that's the curve that goes down. So there's our equation, A1 minus A2 times V dot squared, and that's the pump characteristic. Now, if we plot on top of that the pipe characteristic, which we saw C1 plus C2 times V dot squared, well, that's the correct, that's a Standard parabola, okay? You've got a plus some term times x squared, okay? 
Well, that's a regular parabola, and so that starts, C1 should be below A1, okay? And at the point at which they intercept, okay, or they intersect with each other, is what we know is the operating point, because this is the pressurized that the pump, that the pipe system requires, okay? And this is the pressurized that the pump can supply. And where they intercept, okay, where they, where they join together, that we know is the operating point. Because every pipe system is going to have a particular pipe characteristic. Okay, it'll have a curve that looks like this. Okay? And every pump's going to have a curve that looks like this. And so, to match up that pump to that pipe network, we need to make sure that the operating point is around that point. Yeah. Now, this here isn't a particularly efficient system. What we'd ideally like to have is a pump where we're operating around this efficiency here. Okay? But obviously, this isn't a, like such a system. And we have an efficiency at the operating point New. Okay, so in summary, the pump characteristic is given by this equation. Okay, we've got two constants, A1 minus A2 times V dot squared. We have a pipe characteristic that's given by C1 plus C2 V dot squared. Okay, so C1 and C2 are dependent upon the pipe, A1 and A2 are dependent on the pump. Okay, and Static lift is given by this, so that's the C1 term. It's generally the pressure difference between the reservoirs, okay, and the height difference. We have a C2 term, which is flow dependent, and this is the case when there's no minor losses, okay? So that's slightly different from the example. And the flow rate can be determined by equating the two. We've got one equation here, but one unknown, V dot squared, okay? So we can Equate those two, find out what V dot is, and you've got the operating point. And then if you're given an equation for efficiency, you can then plug that number into efficiency, and you'll get a value for efficiency, which you'll do in the exa first example on the sheets. Now, there are some key things to remember. The first key thing to remember, okay, is the fact that efficiency is power to the flow divided by power consumption, okay? That's the first key thing to remember. The second th key thing to remember is sometimes the pipe characteristic is given in, in head as opposed to uh, pressure. And so you can use this equation, head is pressure divided by rho g to determine your equation in head instead of pressure to match that up to the pump characteristic.